Hey, Saints and Nights. What up with y'all? So, you, you might notice that we are in a different space, okay? It's because okay. <laughs> the other <laughs> venue by which we recorded was our rental property. We'll get into rental property shortly. Um, but we were using it as an Airbnb. We weren't making no money. And so, now we're <laughs> renting it out to a tenant. And so, we took all the furniture from that space and... And put it in our house. And so I just love that I, I was able to, you know, reuse some things. But that has nothing to do with what I'm going to ask you. Well, kind of. You ready? It's in the vein of like real estate, you know. But, but I got to ask you a random question. What's up? Okay. So remember that time you said you was on the plane and you met this lady and she 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 got real like uh, hip hop on you? Oh, I thought we was going to say that for um, story time with Preston Perry. We're not having a story time with Preston Perry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she did. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to tell yeah, the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got on the plane, and uh, she was sitting in my seat. And then uh, I said, ma'am, you know, I think you you in my seat. She said, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, listen. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, it gets worse. It gets worse. And so, you know, I, I, be, I be in first class a lot because I'm diamond or whatever. And oh, okay. so, and, you know, a little flex. Yeah. And then so my friend Joseph Solomon got in and he uh he came and was like, what's up, boy? And then, you know, so she said she looked at him and then she looked at me and she saw we knew each other. And so, mind you, Joe's like 6'8". And so she looked at Joe. She looked up at Joe. She said, what's up, shawty? <laughs> That's so obnoxious. She's Joe said, huh? <laughs> so, but then he said, he said, white people no, got to be stopped. No, 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 he said, he said, she said, she said, what's up, Shawty? He said, what? <laughs> Again, I just. It was just so awkward because she wasn't even, she was like a soccer mom. Like you can like, it's like, this is so unnatural. And I don't know if you're trying to connect with us or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but don't ever say what's up shawty, shawty. so that ain't got nothing to do with today's conversation we just was it never does we was talking about it the other day and i was like we have to bring this up because it's so obnoxious and ridiculous <laughs> but joining us today we have erica brown erica brown the homie what's, what's the name of your businesses i feel like i'm supposed to say erica brown of something Erica Brown and Associates. She got like nine no, businesses. We changed the name. <laughs> what my is name it? Used to be, my name of my team used to be Erica Brown Associates. What but is I it? Did want, I did not want to be the face of it. So okay. now it's Strive. Okay. But um, let's say owning it and living it. Okay. okay. That's, that's business one. What's the other one? Okay. So then we have Strive. Uh-huh. Then we have Boast. Okay. Which is the brokerage. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I mean, we have other businesses Things. that don't have names that are just you know well integrity affiliates. solutions is under your you yes know yes integrity <laughs> oh. solutions we have affiliates right that's affiliates? so dope affiliates <laughs> you know you made it when you got affiliates oh my it's gosh like, <laughs> well she got options oh these, my these are my affiliates she ain't got one llc <laughs> she got s corps and c corps it's like like how can we be like you wow so we wanted to to bring our erica into our home to to talk through just a kind concept of like home ownership real estate investment and even generational wealth yes because it's a conversation that all three of us are constantly having all the time yeah. and it's like why not like have it out loud no right? like seriously like because erica like, is our, is our yeah. friend we vacation with her we're about to go on a vacation with her soon and we talk about these things all the time and i think they're beneficial conversations i feel yeah. like we need to have now before we begin i already feel in my shondo that there are people like I'm finna turn this off hmm. because y'all not talking about I rebuke Jesus you in the name of Jesus <laughs> in the flesh I right? for being closed minded to talk even about the concept of generational wealth or even investing hmm. can to some ears sound like y'all just greedy hmm. and y'all just want money hmm. so why is I guess generational wealth and growing and having businesses and doing all that you do like why wow yeah that's a great I mean, a great question. So for me, I look at the opportunity to be able to build generational wealth as a tool, um, a tool just like um, you can have someone who's a contractor and they have, a, you know, they're really good at contracting and building things. That's their tool to serve their family and to serve the kingdom. So I look at real estate um, and the ability to be able to build wealth in real estate um, as, a, as a tool in yeah. that way, too. 
Yeah, that's dope. That's oh, dope. I forgot to tell people what you do. We talked about her businesses, but we ain't say what they was. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right. so sorry. What you do, Erica? So I do a lot of things. Okay, um, <laughs> give us five. Five. Uh-huh. Okay. So I am a real estate investor. Uh-huh. I teach people how to invest purpose-driven, like-minded people, a lot of believers, how to invest. Um, I homeschool my kids. Yeah. I am (laughs) three big boys. Mm -hmm. I am a co-founder of a brokerage, Mm -hmm. a purpose-driven brokerage. I help run a landscaping company. I think that's five. Okay, give us six. Give us seven. All right, one more. For the spiritual people. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm a team lead of a real estate group, um and i'm a i mean of course i'm a wife mm-hmm. that's there we the go she rounded yeah. it out <laughs> her <laughs> husband is actually said. one of my closest friends what's his name yeah they're like bff his, his, his name's lawrence oh not you said his real name lb yeah his name's yeah, lb but yeah. you know his real name lawrence i'm gonna give you know some dignity and respect to the man yes <laughs> yes so in response to what she just said like what is what is the value of wealth building is or is it even is it even the same as greed yeah i think Hmm. about i think about generational wealth and i think it's so important because i think a lot of times one i think it's i think let me be clear i don't think that god is calling everybody to be generational wealthy wealthy right i think we all have different calls or whatever but i I love being connected and friends with believers who who don't love money more than they love people but still have a a firm foundation of what they, what they feel like God has called them to do. And so mm-hmm. when I go in Eric and Lawrence's home, you know what I'm saying? I see them raising their children up not to be greedy, but to be good stewards, right, mm-hmm. of, of their money. Because I think that's the main thing about generational wealth. Proverbs talks about generational wealth in the sense of yeah, that, a, that, a, that a righteous man will pass down an inheritance to his children, but an unrighteous man, uh, will his, his riches will be gone to the un, you know, unrighteous or whatever. And really what that, that, that passage is talking about is stewardship. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's righteous people who have accumulated wealth, not because they're just chasing money, mm-hmm. but they're stewarding what God has given them well, mm-hmm. and that they're able to pass it down to th- their loved ones and their loved ones, and they can have, you know, seasons of generational wealth. Yeah. And so I think it's important for us to know that whatever God gives us, we could be generational wealthy if our heart is right, and if we're stewarding our money right for the kingdom of God, yeah. right? And and then that's automatically going to trickle down to our children, yeah, our yeah. children's mm-hmm. children. And so I see that. I yeah. go in their house. I go in Erica and, and LB's house, and I see them, you know, you know, I see Lawrence, you know, you know, giving that kids, you know, life lessons. But I also see them talking about real estate. I mean, her her middle son, <laughs> um, like he likes to talk to me about like the stocks that he's investing in. How old is um? He's twelve. Twelve. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I just bought Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is this is important. You right. know what I'm saying? And so I just think that it's it's great uh, for us to teach our kids to steward the gifts and when yeah. i see her when i see eric and lb doing what they're doing it's a gift and they're stewarding it right i think i think some of this is like it's kind of like we have been given a theology mm. of money mm. that was primarily all centered around prosperity gospel mm. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so we swung to the other pendulum where we don't actually have a solid understanding or theology of money where we just see money as a resource mm-hmm. useful to the world and also the kingdom of God. Cause you got the dude who, uh, who used his resources to bury Jesus. What's his right. name? Joseph of Arimathea. Like he was a wealthy man. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like he, his wealth was able to like be useful for giving Jesus a place to like, yeah. Be right. Yeah. For three days. And I want to just, I want to just add Joseph of Arimathea, uh, you know, the gospel only talks about him one time, but he's in all four, four accounts of the gospel. But we see, like, Jesus wouldn't have had a proper burial if this rich man didn't come to Pontius Pilate and say, I want the body of Jesus so I can bury him in this rich tomb. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so we see that's a prime example of God using a man with wealth mm-hmm. for the glory of right. him you and that was that was actually a part of the motivation for us mm-hmm. to decide to begin investing and really you know build wealth like it's crazy because before you know i even had e- e- before we even had like a real estate investment or anything like that i remember consciously 
having like this uh, just, you know, this moment with God really like, OK, sh- you know, is this like, Lord, you know, if you bring wealth to my family, I don't want to be greedy. I want to be able to steward yeah. it well. Like I, it's so crazy because it wasn't like I knew there was like opportunity around the corner. I just remember having like a conscious, very like real yeah. conversation. And when I thought and what God brought me back to was just thinking about all the people that have been in the position to have wealth that have helped us over the years. Yes. Like there was a time when we moved from, um, from Dallas to Atlanta and me and the kids came first and my husband came later. We were just starting out. We were a brand new, you know, young family didn't have anything mm-hmm. <laughs> or any money. And uh, we bought a car. We use, we use all of our savings to buy this car. Mm-hmm. And it turns out the car was a lemon. Okay. It was bad. It didn't even like run. Mm-hmm. So we spent our last bit on this car. Mm-hmm. So and my husband had to get back and forth to work. He was still in um, in Texas. And I remember one of our good friends, they just had a car mm-hmm. um, that they were able to let him borrow. It was like this little two seater sports car. Mm-hmm. But and he's six, four, you know, 200 plus pounds. Mm-hmm. But they were able to allow him to borrow that car so he can get to work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not many of us who who don't have like wealth have a car that you can just let somebody use, you know? And so in that moment really helped to helped him to be able to have the space to not be in survival mode to actually take care of his spiritual mental health Mm. during that time where we were apart because he was getting ready to move here. So it's just so many examples. We've been able to be the benefit of that. Yeah. I I think that's dope. And I think that's a, a huge, you know, um, a blessing that you had mostly like believers helping you Mm -hmm. to help you be in a position that you're in. Because what I see with you is you teaching people, mostly believers with your cohorts, you Mm -hmm. know, how to, you know, make a living for themselves. And so like, what if people, like what if Christians who was financially able to help you didn't help you and now you in a position. And I think that we, you should talk about your your cohorts before this whole thing is over so people can know about it. But that's dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's it really is on some like you know, you got to be honest with your own heart. You know yeah. about you because what what money can do is offer like a false sense of comfort and security. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's usually why we all want to be wealthy is because we don't want to trust. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. like we don't mm-hmm. want to have to be mm-hmm. put in a position Oof. where we got to pray Oof. and be say coming hey, in the hand day. like mm-hmm. like we don't want daily bread. We, we want bread that lasts. Yeah, Oof. and we talk it's, about we've talked about the illusion of success. What we say. Do you don't remember? Uh-uh. I was like, "Ooh, Jackie, there's an illusion." Go ahead, tell me about <laughs> it. What we say when when you when especially when you become the expert at something and you get really good at it mm-hmm. and you um, get so good to where you can like consistently rely on your gut and you think that A plus B equals C because A plus B equals C mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. and so that's you know over over time if you're not careful then you do you know go over to that side where you begin trusting yourself but the Lord is faithful. Hello, mm, come on now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and help it to remind you hold up yeah 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 you don't control this anyways yeah. it's mine that's yeah. that's really good and that's so really I, good. I only brought brung that up to say you know by pursuing the by investing by owning homes by mm-hmm. doing all of that stuff like even if it's like even just americans even the way we define wealth hmm. also needs to be interrogated yeah but I, I feel like us just saying no this is a resource that the lord wants me to use to serve people yeah period yeah. and generosity and all the things is a part of that yeah. now now that we got all that out the way what what's next <laughs> home ownership yes that's really really big one thing like you will hear people say is like why should i buy a house if when i buy a house i gotta like pay for the landscape and i gotta pay for the plumbing and if the roof break i gotta pray for the like y'all make <laughs> it seem like it's like all good and well but it actually takes more work mm-hmm. so what's the whole like why would i buy a house then right you you will still buy a house because it is a long-term investment it's almost like a built-in savings account that yes you have to take care of and there's various ways that can help you take care of it whether it's like home warranties and things like that but um house hacking having people you know renting out rooms and things like that where you can you know be able to do it but over time um your your property if you buy it for say two hundred thousand today in 10 years that property may be worth 
four hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. So it becomes like a built in savings account that it, it, at some point you'll be able to tap into to provide options mm-hmm. for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Because um, I think it's beautiful. One of the reasons why I'm passionate about teaching people is because I feel like I, I, I want to be able to help people free up their time, stop trading time for money Mm. so that they can actually do the things that God is calling them to do. Mm. A lot of us have burdens and we live with those deep burdens, but because we are so caught up in the rat race of the nine to five and just the routine robotic life that sometimes we have to live, that we don't have the freedom to actually, you know, nurture that burden that God has given us. Mm. And so I've been able to um, actually take advantage of real estate as a tool to help me get that that freedom so that we can be freed up to do the things that god is calling us to do whatever it looks so different for everyone but that's good i got a question yeah like for the people who might be listening who are not homeowners because i know before we became homeowners we had a lot of questions of how do we even pursue this yes so like what do you think are like the first main three steps of somebody who is thinking about being a homeowner and want to own own a home what should they they think about first so first step is to tell a friend like tell talk to someone who has bought a home before Mm. and and ask them about like their process and their experience what Mm. uh, because a lot of people think that it's like so difficult Mm. and once you do it you're like oh i guess it really wasn't that bad Mm. so really talk to someone who's done it and then two um take a home buyer's education workshop we did that yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember doing that too. Um, yeah. Cause even though I grew up in a home that we owned, the the education didn't get passed down to me. Like my parents had great credit. I I didn't have good credit. I was like, what what happened? Yeah, you right, know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, taking a home buyer's education class, which are generally free, and they're like you could do them online, or you can even do it at one of uh, my our website, or you can um, go to your local real estate company, and they'll have a home buyer's education mm-hmm. workshop. And that's I, I think those two things are like the best start to mm-hmm. pique your interest and figure out what your next steps are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the main things I when I got married, I just always had bad credit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Jackie was like, ah, we're going to get your credit up. That was like one of her main goals okay. in life. No, this this is, this is by bad, we mean he didn't have a score. Hey, oh, man, okay. You got to put me out there like that? I just mean, we need, to, we, need, we need to be clear. Be specific. Yeah, because it's like bad is like a number. You didn't have a number. <laughs> and so it was like, I don't even know how to deal with experience saying inconclusive. <laughs> And FICO not having nothing. Like it's like what so is you know, that? I had bad. You okay? Uh, <laughs> but what you got now? I'm in the seven hundred. I'm in the seven hundred. <laughs> That's great. Hey, look God, at God, 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 God I love it. how you, you give out that credit too. That's yeah. awesome. It, it's it's, it's <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. Should, should people, I guess my question is, and this you don't have to stay on this long, but should people should people allow like their credit score or their credit number to like really burden them when it comes to becoming homeowners that's because dave ramsey i feel like he's like credit scores don't be mattering and yeah. I, I use bad grandma on, on right purpose. yeah yeah no no i mean it does matter if you if, if you don't have cash you know um and you, and you don't have like a uh, someone in your family that can just buy you a house for cash right. then credit does matter right. and 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 statistically when you have lower credit scores you pay for more for everything mm-hmm. not just for a house mm-hmm. you know and so a lot of times i remember because for me I, it wasn't that i had like horrible bad habits i just had like two credit cards that i thought in college they just give it to you and i thought i didn't know i had to pay it back mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just like what <laughs> it's free and it ruined my credit you know <laughs> it's free money so it took some time to get together so um a lot of times when people have bad credit it's almost like they look at it like out of sight out of mind Mm -hmm. until they need to deal with it you need to deal with it like just because you're not paying attention to it doesn't mean it's not a problem so it's really just uh confronting it and pulling your credit score we if you go to annualcreditreport.com you every every year you get a free credit score and you can pull that report and just have a date with yourself and be honest and pull that report and then, okay, so, okay, what, what do I need to do to move forward? And a lot of times people sign up for, like, credit repair programs. A lot of times they're just scams. They are. We got scammed. Yeah, so yeah. don't do that. $800. Yeah. 
Yeah, don't it's, do that. And so, because you don't, you don't, you don't need them. The internet yeah. has enough tools yes. to teach you how to handle your credit, how to, you know, what's it when you, you when you remove certain things off of it. Or yes. What, like even just knowing your credit to debt ratio is yeah. a game changer. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Like keeping that thing at thirty percent. Yes. You you, you have your bills on time yeah. and paying the credit cards off, and um, like you said, and establishing new credit yeah. really is the best way you can build credit by establishing new positive credit. Okay, so probably, as we mentioned at the, at the top of this, we have a rental property, which mm-hmm. was something that I think we purchased that house in 2020. That's year. Yeah, That's June what? 2020. When I was pregnant with... Sage. August. No, Sage was a baby. August. And One of them. Too many kids. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> the reason we did it, which I think I... I'm sure I've talked talk to you before is that like a lot of our income comes from ministry. So whether mm-hmm. that's books or events or all the things. And I started to kind of like dialogue with God about how I wanted to, I didn't want all of my income to be contingent on ministry. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think, I, I think it's a conscience thing for me where it's like, I wanted to have a purer yes. Mm-hmm. So like, so my, my yes is because it's a yes, not because I need my rent paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so I naturally just was like, we need to like invest in something. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so being connected with you and just all, and you, and you, like, <laughs> we was like, let's figure out a way to buy mm-hmm. a home. And the area that we bought the home in and all the things, mm-hmm. even though the Airbnb did not work, mm-hmm. it's still working. Because yes, we know, pivoting. like, in some years, mm-hmm. like, the house is going to be worth some things. Right. right. And so I guess for people who already own a home, what would be the be- benefit or the value of purchasing real estate properties? Oh, man. Th- that's even, that that's great. The value, especially if you purchased your home in the last two years or beyond, mm-hmm. then there's a good chance because of the uh, large amount of appreciation or the large amount of like uh, ways that the home prices have increased. Mm. Um, you have a lot of equity in your home that you could actually use. What's equity? Equity is the amount of money that your home is worth versus how much you owe. So say your home is worth 400000 and it's worth based on what the other homes around you have sold for and you actually owe the bank 200 then that means that the difference between 400 and 200 is equity equity there we go <laughs> so there are different ways that was ways. a really great way that i've never heard equity like broken down yeah that. very simple You're very simple mm-hmm. you're a teacher too look at that look at that <laughs> and so i can teach you how to very conservatively safely um use some of that two hundred thousand to then and choose a market that you would like to invest in and take a, a small portion of that money to and by market you mean neighborhoods yes neighborhoods cities mm-hmm. etc yeah. um thank you and take a small portion of that money to put as a down payment on an investment property that depending on your goals can provide you more cash flow mm. or um a longer appreciation over yeah. time like you guys yeah. um, are going to be able to do. And That's you know what's, what What gets in the way of people one seeing wisdom in that and putting the time in it is two things is discipline and patience mm-hmm. because we want we want quick money mm. we want we want quick return mm. you yeah. know like you know it's like it's like weight loss we we want to take the doo-doo pills because <laughs> we want a flat stomach <laughs> and because we never develop the patience and the discipline to actually have just a good nutritional diet right as soon as we stop doodling now we get big again because we never we never exactly. work that muscle right. and so that that's a terrible example but i think it's no yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. With, talk, with, about talk about doodle talk about doodle yes like real estate <laughs> Is 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 building wealth and income that takes a long, it's a long time. Game. And I, I just love the the options that it that it creates yes, for, for talk you. Talk about that, right? Because mm-hmm. you know, as you get older, and you don't want to do rental properties no more, you don't want to do Airbnbs no more. If your son or daughter gets out of college and they have a little cash and they would need a place to stay or whatever, like you have the options to 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 do so much yeah. when you have equity 
in multiple places. Yeah, so that's actually how we plan to pay for our son's college. So one of our first investment properties, like I'm fine with sharing numbers. I'm like really open, but our one of our first investment properties we purchased for sixty thousand dollars, and it's a property in the like a now. It wasn't like popular then, but I knew that the future development was coming mm-hmm. um, on the the belt line, and so so now you know the property is worth even today it's worth like four hundred right, and so our son's getting ready to go to school, so he gets ready to go to college if he needs assistance say he doesn't get a scholarship or whatever he needs assistance i can basically go to that property and either refinance it or get a line of credit off of that property and pay for his school um with that with that um equity and the beautiful thing about it is i'm getting rent every month from someone else Mm -hmm. um so i can and i can redo that over and over again if i want to so someone else is paying the mortgage I'm able to take, I'm able to cover the expenses and then that money is going to continue to grow. Um, The equity is going to continue to grow as well as I'm getting a check every month, right? And then when my son gets ready to go to college, I can pay his tuition from that property and do it all over and over again. Mm -hmm. Wow. over and over again yeah. <laughs> and so it's, a, it's it's like a just a, a cycle that you could take advantage of and be able to pass that on to my kids yeah. so that they can um, have those options too wow, you're the, like the, a walking monopoly game <laughs> yeah it really is it kind of do is. not really pass like go that. collect two hundred dollars <laughs> but she's making them brown properties <laughs> and them orange properties work for that they eventually become boardwalk yeah. That's a word. That's, <laughs> you know that's a word. <laughs> but the 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 uh the wild thing is the first time I heard about that concept is when we lived in uh Chicago yeah. and our accountant is a guy named Ged. He owned these apartment building mm-hmm. or a, an apartment building that had like maybe I don't know fifteen to twenty doors. And Lincoln Park and Lincoln Park wasn't that special. He, when he bought, bought it was it when, when it was the hood, mm-hmm. and he he just it was so simple. He was like, because he was probably in his seventies. He was like, yeah, I bought it in like nineteen eighty seven, and he said all of the rent that I that the the tenants would pay me, I used it to pay off the mortgage. He was like, mm-hmm. I never took a dime mm-hmm. from what the tenants would give me, and he was like, now I'm seventy, and I can just hang out with my wife and go on ski trips all the time. Yeah, because that entire that entire uh building is paid off, and so now everything that the tenants give me just you know but that's rest. Not, but, but and i was like yeah. yikes that's yeah. smart but but not only not only is he resting but not only that one of the main things that he said he does um for, like low-key for charity skiing. not not skiing he helped he was helping believers do oh, their yeah. taxes oh yeah, like yeah, that's, that's, that. that's the way that's the charge them. yeah that, we didn't get we didn't wow pay for it. yeah and that and so that's the way he wanted to serve yeah. the christian community he was like I don't really need y'all money, right? And so he was like, he was a low key millionaire at our at our church. Right. Nobody knew he was a millionaire, and, and if you you had to ask him because he, mm-hmm. no, cause I he mean, was. I mean, he was yeah. wearing Skechers and like, <laughs> that's how they be. That's you know how, like, yeah, you know what I mean. But like, he was like, I want to serve the body of Christ by teaching right. them financial literacy and helping them with their taxes, and so. Yeah. He was a blessing to us. I just yeah. was impressed because, like, the way I grew up, it's like if the tenants are paying you that's your money and Mm -hmm. you need to spend it on yourself right and so the fact that like he had to wait to the 2000s to actually be able to see the profit Mm -hmm. but like now until he dies and whoever he gives that building to it's theirs yeah and i was like man that's major and he's paid it off and yeah so lincoln park is one of the most it's very wealthiest neighborhoods in chicago and it's multiple units and he owns the building with no mortgage yeah and it's just all profit i love it and and there's and you definitely it's definitely a long game and then the beautiful thing is that you do have small uh kind of nuggets that you can take advantage of now um even though like the greater reward will be later so like i take off the month of december Mm -hmm. and so i taking off work not working i remember last year i took off and my son was just like you're not working so what's how we're gonna how we're gonna make money and i showed him my email and i was Mm -hmm. like deposit 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 mm-hmm, deposit mm-hmm. and so this is the value of real estate is that i can take off the month and you know be with my family and i have to worry about work yeah. and things are taken care of and you are providing housing for people yeah. providing okay. housing is such so, is so important it's like one of the most important things in our life you know where we lay our head at night mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it can really change someone's life so i think it's a great thing to do i do want want you to shout out uh, what you do online, like what your class mm-hmm. is and stuff like that, 
and tell people your Instagram and tell people how mm-hmm. they can stay connected to you because I, I do think that a lot of times we don't look at the work that you're doing as as ministry Mm -hmm. but like man like Mm -hmm. what if you what if what if god is using i don't think what if god is using people like you to help believers be freed up to do more ministry because they're more financially um free to do so and so talk about your cohorts and talk about why you started them and then talk about how people can 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 get connected to yeah yeah absolutely it was really interesting because i was working with so um you know i'm a licensed agent here in atlanta and so i have been investing on my own and a a part of or my family we've been investing and so a part of the process of uh being an agent and us you know picking up properties over time is we would use the income that i made as an agent to then reinvest in real estate and so i had friends just being like oh wow how do you do that how do you do that so i started helping friends over time and then i had a lot of friends come to me like one time and they were like hey can you teach us and just because of all the things i mentioned that i do there's like no way that i can teach everybody individually so then that's when a good friend of mine came up and said you should do like a cohort or some type of like group program where you can teach people all in one time so the cohort the cohort was birthed out of really wanting to help people in an efficient way (laughs) Um, and so what it is is it's a 12-week program where I walk people through in a group um, of I've developed a curriculum that teaches them how to invest um, in various ways and and even get, it goes all the way to property management. Also, we have one on one time so that I can help them develop a specific strategy based on their personal situation. Now, the beautiful thing about the cohort that's even more amazing than what I just mentioned that I I had no idea was going to be a factor was the community aspect. Mm. I mean, I have it, it's really it's interesting because we have like this a lo- that we have this group of like-minded people mm-hmm. um lots of believers lots of like first gen immigrants lots of just purpose-driven people who are like i know that there's something more i know that there's a you know a better way to help my community come in one place and the the building of community that has taken place has been something that i did not you know anticipate Mm. a lot of people don't have other people in their life that they can have these conversations with Mm -hmm. i think we're special where our group like we have these conversations all the time but Mm -hmm. most people don't most people they're the only ones in their group talking about these things so the cohort has provided a place for people to find other like-minded people um, who aren't greedy, who are, you know, a- about things that are bigger than themselves yeah. come together and learn. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's really been a we have our first in-person retreat tomorrow. Oh, wow. Wow. So I have people flying Busy all over. Hmm? Busy bee. <laughs> <laughs> so we have people flying all over uh, that I'm going to meet in person for the first time tomorrow. So for so. the person listening, how can they get? get connected to so the i would say to follow me on instagram first is uh erica b e-r-i-k-a b investor um and then if you go to my link tree you can go to my website you can join my waiting list for my cohort all my links are there so waiting list. shoot me a dm yeah there's a waiting list i, on, I only um launch four times a year okay so, so holla at me <laughs> I help you. <laughs> well, thank you, Erica Brown, for joining us. Oh, and I just, I want to just quickly us. add. Mm-hmm. I know, I know, it's a lot of Christians who listen to our podcast, and I think the topic of money we talked about it, but the topic of money could get funny. And I just want <laughs> us sure. to know that that money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of yes. all evil. Yes. And so I think that if you love money <laughs> more than you love God and people, I think that's something that you have to take to the Lord to allow the Lord to deal with something in your heart. But at the end of the day, I think that God isn't calling us all to be rich, but he is calling us all to be wise stewards. And how can we steward our, our money and our and our possessions in a way that glorifies him? And so some of us, God is calling us to be more wealthy than others, but it's all for the glorification of him. And so we wanted to have Eric on because I feel take, like she does that. Us. Right. She does we that well. Nope. She does mm-hmm. that well. And so, yeah, just wanted to just, just read, a cle- read Ecclesiastes and you'll be yes, good yes over and over <laughs> <laughs> alright y'all bye peace <laughs>